were you doing it perfectly in your mind? In a way, right? Yeah, like I yeah. thought that I was, right? Cause people are like, oh wow, you're a super mom, right? Cause you, you kind of want to hear that, but you're also breaking into pieces on the inside. Cause you're like, well, I have to continue and keep up this facade, how? You almost had bragging rights. Like women are walking around thinking that one, you have to carry the world on your shoulders. Mm-hmm. And, and you are carrying the world on your shoulders but people are like oh my god you're so awesome and you're like yes I am and in your mind you're like but I'm about to snap somebody please take this cape just take it there's another way to get things done right you can have this level of success um, and you don't need to do all those other things Sometimes I'm around the house doing things and I'm like, well, Beyonce is not doing this. Like, <laughs> what is going on, right? <laughs> but again, she has a team of people and you can't get to a certain level of success without having help. You just can't. Who am I to say no? And also, why am I blocking someone else's blessing when they, you know, offer to help me? Welcome everyone to Why She's Winning. I'm your host, Christy Rutherford. Y'all cold, Simone? Because you see, I got on my um, my always warm Bahamian clothes. Didn't you say you just had a snowstorm? You just is had that a you, Is that yeah. why that button right right up there to your neck? Is that? It's it's chilly. I have a space <laughs> heater right here. <laughs> All right. So we're here to talk to Simone. A. Brooks. Simone is a healthcare leader with a proven track record of developing and expanding innovative solutions. She has over 15 years experience in wealth management program development and corporate retail in regional and global organizations across multiple industries. In her current role as innovation strategist as MVP Healthcare, Simone facilitates consumer studies using qualitative research as well as quantitative survey data. I got that right. She evangelizes the culture of innovation throughout the organization to uphold customer centricity using all them big words. She is passionate about driving healthcare equity and ensuring all populations receive fair healthcare, regardless of their ethnicity, income, gender, or otherwise. Prior to joining MVP, Simone was pivotal in driving partnerships between community-based organizations, skilled nursing facilities, hospitals, and private practices to improve care for the Medicaid and uninsured populations. Additionally, she developed a certified training program for community health workers in collaboration with local community colleges and developed a value-based payment training program, which taught executive leaders of almost two dozen local care organizations. She holds a bachelor's of science degree in economics with a minor in information technology from Rensselaer? Rensselaer. Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Okay. RPI. Okay, great. RPI. And holds an executive (laughs) master. Uh, executive MBA from the University of Rochester, Simon School of Business. She's a dual member of Toastmasters International and is an active member of her church. She's married to a high school sweetheart and they have three children. Welcome, Simone. Thank you. All right. So, yay. So, so Simone, tell us what was going on with you when you were like, you know what? I need to do something different. What was going on? Nothing. And also, what's that new movie that won all those awards, everything and everywhere, all at once? Everything happening all at once. (laughs) Exactly. And nothing. So I say that because the pandemic happened to everyone, right? But in addition to the pandemic, at the time when the world shut down, my father also received a, uh, a terminal cancer diagnosis. And so my children and I, went to shelter in place, if you will, at my parents' home to be with my dad. And so during that span of time, from the beginning of April, um, he passed June 24th. I was also schooling at home. Um, My children, granted they were in school, but you know, it was virtual. So I had a one and a half year old, a four year old and a six year old, right? And so my, Yes. And living at home with mom and dad all over again. But in this case, watching my dad's um, health deteriorate. And so 
that's what was going on. And then fast forward um, a week, almost a week after he passed, I was laid off. But that was something that I called, I think, into existence without realizing that I did that. Because at one point I said, Daddy, I think I'm going to have to leave my job. And he said, oh, but you love the work that you do. Yeah, but it's this is toxic. It's just the environment that I'm in is not healthy. And so that must have opened the door, which now I have that awareness, thanks to VFI. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I was laid off. And so I had a great deal of time. And my husband said, don't, there's no need for you to rush back to work. Take this time. So I'm grieving. The children are now home during the summer. And because the house is empty, my mom also moves in with us. So there's all these, um, you know, dynamic shifts. And, and so I was doing a lot, but not also realizing that I needed to take care of myself and slow down. And then I came across a lovely woman, Christy Rutherford, who, by the way, I don't know how you came across my screen. I will say that. And, and <laughs> I have no idea. It must be connections. But someone just commented on one of your posts and said something about a coincidence. There are no coincidences. So you came into my life and I'm like, who is this? Excuse me, Christy, but I'm like, who is this woman shouting at us and now shouting at me because I was feeling like you were really speaking to me. Um, and so that was the beginning. So I got three words for how you showed up. That Judge, Judge Terry talked about it. You was bat ish crazy. I said, this lady right here. <laughs> I, th I thought I was normal a little uh -uh. bit. Teetering, <laughs> fragile, right? Mm -hmm. Normalized chaos. And I mean, you know, we're looking back now. So we can so we can talk about it. We can label mm -hmm. it as, as what it's gonna be because you're better now, but you were not okay. And no. so I, I wrote down you were grieving. You're mothering, you're being mothered to a to a mom that was grieving, right? Mm -hmm. Her her mm -hmm. life long partner. Uh, and then I wrote hot ASS mess. Uh, and you as a wife, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And you're living in your childhood home as a child while being a mom and trying to be a wife at the same time you're being, and that was the biggest conflict, being seen as a child, but trying to be a mother and a wife like mm -hmm. that. That was the, the flickering that was going on that, that we saw. Um, and I'm sorry. And you had a job. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And I, I was got... working. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. I, so, I, I, yeah. <laughs> but, but here's the thing, Simone. Most people think that, um, that that alone will take most people out. I'm sorry. And it was COVID. And y'all was locked in the house. And you were homeschooling. A four-year-old, a six-year-old, and you had a baby. Yep. That alone is enough to like run down the street crazy, right? But then you had a job and you're a leader and you're expected to show up and perform. So it's it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And so when you know, when we talk to women, um, and you look back, it's like it's okay to admit that you were going through something because you were, and we're not willing to do that. Like you were like, I thought I was normal. I'm like, did you not just listen to? <laughs> so why do you think at the moment, because we had a call um, and I, I can't remember what I said to you, which, you know, people always say I'd be offensive, which is okay. Um, but like in your mind, what was, why were you trying to make it normal? And I want you to talk about in your mind, like now, because you can look back and be like, oh, no, I was not like that mm -hmm. was not like it, I right. was not OK. So, you know, we, we talk about mom guilt, like everybody talks about mom guilt, but nobody wants to show their wounds first to be like, it's OK to be a little crazy. It's not OK to stay that way because that's not fair. So talk about like your mental state and like why you was trying to like act like it was all together and it and it wasn't really like that. 
Well, you you alluded to it. It's it was not sustainable, but there's this fallacy that we're supposed to do everything with no help, right? And so that's where I was. I was assuming that there were these expectations on me that I was supposed to mom and do all of that, be a wife and do all of that, be a caring um, daughter to both of my parents and do all of that, as well as working with my coworkers and teammates and all the other people around me. And at that moment, it was what I was trying to do, juggle all the, and I, I, I can't juggle, right? Like, how can you juggle all of these things and do everything perfect? It's, you, you can't. And I was in that cycle thinking that. And also because I had done all of it and seemingly in a good way, I was like, oh, so since I did that during the pandemic and worked and schooled these children and, you know, parented them and was nursing my dad and all of that, then once this is over, it should be easy breezy. Nah. <laughs> Yeah, that rubber band is only going to stretch so far, right? Because you're like, you're denying. Dr. Lissa said, I was waiting for you to say, do it perfectly. Like, mm -hmm. were you were you, were you, you doing it perfectly in your mind? And my, well, in a way, right? Yeah. Like, I yeah. thought that I was, right? Because people are like, oh, wow, you're a super mom, right? Because you, you kind of want to hear that, but you're, also breaking into pieces on the inside because you're like, well, I have to continue and keep up this facade. How? Yeah. Um, so I wrote down, you almost, you almost had bragging rights. Like women are walking around thinking that one, you have to carry the world on your shoulders. Mm-hmm. And, and you are carrying the world on your shoulders, but what you really look like is one of those, you know, circus things where you're like balancing on the ball and you got like all the, all the teacups, like if one teacup falls, then they all fall down. So it's almost like you're trying to balance, but it's on a ball as opposed to being superwoman walking around with all of these things and using his bragging rights. You'd be like, tell me I'm doing good. Somebody please tell me I'm doing good. And people are like, oh my God, you're so awesome. And you're like, yes, I am. And in your mind, you're like, but I'm about to snap. Somebody please take this cake. Just take it. Yeah. It's too much. It's mm -hmm. too much. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so I remember, because you did a three-day uh, event, which we got one coming up in a, in a, in a couple of weeks. I'm like, I ain't did that three-day in three years. So I was like this. Uh-uh. Nope. That was too much for us. But... Uh, <laughs> I told somebody about that and they were like, the what? I was like, oh, she said she's not doing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. But we brought it back. So, because uh, now we're still in the same crazy times, right? Like, and, and actually, Simone, it never ended. Let, let the world tell it. Like, mm -hmm. 2023 mm -hmm. is just a continuation of 2020, 21, 20. It's like, it's never, like, we're, we're living in normalized chaos. Hey, Chris Rutherford here. Do you want to learn how to act for and get a 30% raise without getting another degree? Look, black women are the most educated and the least paid. That should tell you that that math is not mathing. The degree is not the path to the next level. It's actually learning how to articulate the value and take credit for the work that you've already done. So I want to invite you to get my free case study at changenowwithchristy.com. Just get the information, use it and take the money out of the hands of your employers and put it into your household because you already deserve it. You just have to know how to ask for it. Again, changenowwithchristy.com. I can't wait for you to get this insight, use it, and get the money that you deserve. Take care. So talk to us about, um, I remember we were like wrestling, you know, we like to do WWF around here a little bit sometimes, but you were like, because now you're, you're, you're cleaning the house, you're washing the clothes, you're homeschooling these kids and you're cooking all the food and like i was like man get a mate <laughs> and let's be clear housekeeping is not my ministry so that alone <laughs> was taking me out i know so why was well like so then it was like it was this whole ordeal 
of like wrestling you down to the ground, right? Mm -hmm. To like get you to even consider getting somebody to do the laundry and 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 the uh and clean the house. Mm -hmm. Because in your mind, then I'm not being the perfect mom or the wife or the daughter. So what was that resistance like looking back on it? I want like what was your state of mind? Because now you can look back and be like, that was crazy. I should have paid somebody a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had these images, right, of women that had done it or did they is the question, right? So I'm thinking that looking at my mom and my mother-in-law, right, like they had families and they, you know, took care of the house and all this, but also were we really in the same position, right? And also did they have all those children, like three children under, you know, is school age at that moment. And um, I, I also had to think back too, because what had to be um, brought up to me, and I was reminded that my grandmother had someone to help her keep house, right? She also had other, uh, like a village of people to help out. And my grandmother was an executive leader. And although I believe she cooked, I didn't see her cooking. I saw my grandfather cooking, right? And so that also, I'm like, why did I forget that? And why did I think that I had to really do everything by myself? And also not even say anything to my husband and putting those expectations on too, right? Like, oh, he must think that I need to do this. And really when he says it, you know, he's like, no, why don't you just... Just ask. You don't need to. So even now, he's like, just go to bed. I got this. You don't have to worry about it. I got this. Because he also knows, well, I was cracking up on the inside. I was I was going to talk about that because you were you were almost resentful that he wasn't stepping in to help you when when one, you never asked and two, you weren't really going to allow it. that part. So I want to break that down a little bit because, you know, there was a study that this woman talked about. I was in this conference a couple of years ago. <clears throat> I was in the wrong conference. You know, I'm blowing every room, Simone. But and the lady was like, women don't get to the executive level because their husbands don't help them like wash the dishes and wash the clothes. And all the women were shaking their head. Yes, I got up and left. I was like, I ain't listening to this garbage. Right. Um, because. <laughs> Women will hold on to that and be like, that's why I can't get ahead. So you're going to stop yourself from getting a $200,000 raise instead of hiring a $200 cleaning lady to come in here and wash and clean these clothes. And then you're mad at your husband. You know, people, they're, they're like giving women permission to be mad at their spouses for not doing something that one, they didn't ask for. And two, they place these impossible expectations on because if they do it, then you didn't do it right. You left a crumb on the dishes. You know, this is how I, I tied the trash bag on the side of the trash. You just stuck it in there. So what was what looking back now, what were those unrealistic expectations that you put on him that you can look back now and be like this? Oh, my God, I shouldn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, all of that. Right. Like, oh, you're not folding the clothes in the way that I would fold the clothes or the dishes or you. You said the trash bag. I'm like. Was Chris, did Christy put uh, sound in my house? Like, how did she, how did she know? Because literally, it will be trash day, and here I am. And he's like, "Just give it to me." And I'm like, "No, but I gotta." Why? Uh, it's that perfection thing, right? But it is trash. It as long as it just gets out. Oh, this is good. Cause I remember who you were. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, you on the ledge. You got you half Reese's pieces. Not even a whole. You half Reese's pieces were cracking up. What was that? What was that like to hear? Cause I says either you on the ledge. You, I mean, you were like one click from crazy, like complete burnout. And uh, so, what was it like to hear it? One, two. What was your resistance to it? And then three, looking back. What are your thoughts on it now? Well, one, I was like, no, things are great. But also I was like, she sees me and she understands. 
I don't know how. Well, I do know how because you are anointed. I will say it and I'll say it again. Um, but that's how. So the resistance was also hearing it like, well, yeah, you were doing it, but you were, there's another way to get things done, right? You can have this level of success um, and you don't need to do all those other things. In fact, oh gosh, so this is coming to me because Sometimes I'm around the house doing things and I'm like, well, Beyonce is not doing this. Like, <laughs> what is going on? Right. <laughs> but again, she has a team of people and you can't get to a certain level of success without having help. You just can't. Everybody that has achieved something. Jesus Christ had the disciples. So who am I to say no. And also, why am I blocking someone else's blessing when they, you know, offer to help me, which is something that I was doing. And now that I'm allowing it, I'm accepting help, um, still with a bit of resistance, but accepting more help. Um, I feel like the blessings are not only coming to me, but to them as well. Okay, who are you to block the cleaning lady's blessing? She need that money. Come on over here, please. Please. <laughs> Hold my clothes. That's yeah, it is what it is. So let's so what advice do you have for women now, uh, Simone, who are in your position that you because the thing about now, mm -hmm. 2020 was a doozy. 2023, if women have not done anything and they're still there and they're burning out and they're looking at everybody, I mean like on fire in this inferno you know it's one thing for me to say that because like, you don't understand you're married you don't have kids i'd be like but i'm happy right so it's so you looking back at yourself now what advice would you say you know what advice would you give yourself which is really a reflection of what's going on with the women today and it's actually exacerbated because they haven't done anything and they're still locked in that same mentality i would say do something for yourself right because we all, well, moms put their children first. But even as women just having, by nature, we want to care for other people. And I mean, people say it all the time. How can you do that? You have to put your own oxygen mask on. And that was something that I neglected. Um, now I'm taking the time once a month I, around. So my birthday is October 19th. Around the 19th, I will set a spa appointment a day. And also like that law of attraction, opening things up. My husband got me um, a monthly uh, what do you call it? membership to the spa. So I'm going to take advantage of it. Right. At first, I'm like, oh, no, I can't because I've had it for a while. I wasn't using it. But why not? Right. I have to take care of myself and refill my cup. And so I, I really would um, encourage women to do that, even if it's stepping outside to take a walk and get some fresh air by yourself, right? Even if it's taking 10 minutes to um, just have a jam session by yourself, do that. Do something that's going to bring you joy because your family will thank you for it. There's even times where I think to myself, not only do I need a break, but they probably need a break from me too. Ooh, that's good. Okay, let me write that down. They need a break. Because I had a couple questions for you. Um, so <laughs> your husband has seen <clears throat> he's been supportive the whole time. The whole time, yeah. Like you you rejected his help and then got mad he didn't help and then when he helped you got mad that it wasn't in the way that you wanted to do it crazy <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair assessment right and then he's like well i ain't gonna do it and then now you're mad because he's not doing it and he's like all right fine i'll do it and then you're badgering him because he did it and he's like well i ain't gonna do it so now you're caught in this cycle and you got kids, and now, I mean, like, it's a lot, right? So, oh, I'm laughing because he bought you a monthly membership to a spouse. Like, oh, oh my gosh, she's finally taking care of herself. Let me be a supportive spouse. And you, and 
you normally would have said, I'm just going to look back to three years ago, you know I wanted that Dyson vacuum. Why you buy me a monthly membership? <laughs> you know I wanted that vacuum that got up everything. <laughs> so I remember like your voice, and this is, you know, <clears throat> I only bring up old stuff on these calls, right? Oh, he bringing up old stuff, Christy. Okay, go ahead. But you know, it's funny because I was talking to uh, Kathisha, who lost eighty eight pounds last year, and like um, whoever else we had on the 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 one day thing that we did a couple weeks ago. And I was like, she was like, "Oh, ain't nothing happened." I said, "Did you get a fifty five thousand dollar raise?" She was like, "That ain't enough." And then I was like, "Kathisha, did you lose eighty eight pounds?" She was like, "Yeah, but that was last year." I'm like. <laughs> Y'all off the chain now. Does that make sense? Like the stuff that people be begging for, y'all get in, y'all say thank you initially. And then you be like, but well, we trying to get to a million dollars. I like that 55, but why are you bringing up old stuff? So it's like your voice was shaking and you kept saying, I'm okay. And your, you, your voice was like, you had like this kind of rumble or does that make sense? Like you almost had this, um, it wasn't stuttering. But you and I know what it sounds like because I because I did burn out is when your voice starts to tremble when you talk because you're trying to talk under all the pressure. Right. And you're trying to, like, eke out something. Hey, Chris Rutherford here. I hope that you're enjoying the podcast so far. But what I know that you'll love even more is joining us in our private community. Join us in this private community. Let money loves happy people and get live and on-demand insight so you can use this information to live the life that you truly and deserve get a raise and a promotion no problem step into your purpose no problem get the relationship that you deserve no problem look it's never too late to live the life that you deserve it's never too late to live a life of total fulfillment you just need information and inspiration to get on the path and living your greater life so go ahead again click on the link on around this video Join us in our private community and change your life for the best. Take care. See you soon. When you see women today that that do that, because we see it all the time, they be like, I'm okay. Wait, I'm okay. I'd be like, girl, are you listening to yourself? I'm happy. <laughs> all right. Please say headshot some more. Once you're now on the other side of it, do you see it's common? Is am I by myself? Is looking at that, or is that so? So, what do you see in women um, that you think that they're unwilling to admit to themselves today? That they need help, right? Because who wants to admit that? Because it's almost like saying, "I'm failing. I'm drowning. Come and get me," right? Like when I was going through all of that it's like i was um walking through the desert right <laughs> like just wandering aimlessly with no direction but also hoping for help but then not accepting the help so it's this weird um it's a strange feeling but i will say that you've got to ask and you have to accept it So Dr. Alyssa said, you know, I love that we focus on self-care, but in a system that is broken, what does it do, right? So it's like, <clears throat> when I listen to women talk about badgering the government to, to reveal all pay salaries, mm -hmm. lie, not going to happen. Good luck, right? Is it easier to get the United States government to... to to display, to make corporations display all the salaries or focus on how you should get $200,000. Is it easier to focus on taking care of yourself, Simone, than it is to change a, a system? What advice do you have for that? Because I'm going to start yelling. But what do you have on that? So there's this quote from T.D. Jakes from one of the, um, the videos that you shared. And he said, God is waiting for you to believe what he said about you, not what you remember about you. So once you start to really believe that and take on um, what it is that God put in you, then the other doors are going to start opening. So 
the self-care is part of it because you've got to take care of that vessel, right? Otherwise, it's not going to allow you to ascend to higher heights. You know, one day I put up a a, um, a quote. I like to test my, my real heated stuff on Facebook first before I put it on LinkedIn. Uh, and um, the lady, I said, Huh? You go good? ahead. You good? You look good, girl. Um, and I said, microaggressions are people triggering your childhood trauma. Boy, this DEI practitioner wrote me a dissertation. Uh, <laughs> right. So when we talk about misogyny, you know, microaggressions, and all this other kind of stuff. That's, I'm not saying that is not true. I'm just saying 80% of it is you, right? Like, because if you have stuff going on and unresolved stuff going on, they just pushing the buttons that you have. So is it easier to get the people around you to stop pushing your 80 buttons than it is to just heal 60 of the 80 and, you, and you're not that trigger? So what... Um, what are some of the things that how has how has you now being you changed how you show up one as a as a um, mom mm-hmm. two as a wife three as a daughter and then four as a leader at work so getting to my happy was important for each of those relationships that you named Right. I had to because otherwise I'm just going to show up like barely. Right. (laughs) Just just living and existing, which is was not um, beneficial for anyone. Right. And so getting to that happy, finding what um, where the joy was for myself. And so I had to be reminded of certain things. Right. Because I had forgotten who Simone was. And way back when, before even, well, not thinking about, but before I had children, right? I remember being in this restaurant um, in Brooklyn and I saw this pregnant woman and I was like, wow, she's glowing. She looks beautiful. When that happens for me, I want to also look like my child is not whooping my bleep, right? Because then that starts to happen. So during my pregnancies, I was fabulous. But then after, it's just like, oh my God, what is going on? Where is Simone? What does she like to do? Right. And so getting back to what are the things that I enjoy doing? I enjoy dancing. I enjoy music. So for me to throw on um, my hype playlist, right, in the morning is good for everyone because everyone in the house is now participating, right? And the kids are even singing Lovely Day and belting it out at the end when Bill Withers gets to that part, right? We're rolling down the windows, yes, in the winter in upstate New York and blaring and singing Mary J. Blige just fine because it's making our souls happy, right? And so even when Um, We went to visit my mother the other day. I was able to laugh with her, right? Where it didn't feel like we were just existing, just being mom and daughter, having a conversation, but we got to enjoy one another. That's good. We'll come back to this job in a few minutes. So uh, Vincine was like, hey, Simone. Hey, Vincine. And then Denise wrote. It took you a long time to date yourself, but give yourself self-care. You shine a sister queen. Sister queen. Hi, Denise. <laughs> um, so so let's talk about you know the, the relationship with you or your mom. We ain't gonna tell all your business just in case your mom watching. But it like it was it was overbearing in some regards, but it's but it's like that with a lot of women. I've seen mm-hmm. women who have allowed their mothers to drive them into a nervous breakdown, right? But it's almost like the perfectionism part and trying to be the perfect person. So how, what were some of the challenges, if you're willing to share, if you ain't, just be like, nope, and then we'll move on to the next question. We'll start talking about your job. But like, what were some of the challenges that were going on? Either was it her expectation or your inability to draw boundaries, right? Or was it your expectation? 
your misinterpreted belief of her expectation and your unwillingness to say no what was the what was the healthy tension that was really unhealthy what was that what was that what was it really okay. now now on the other side of it now on the other side of it in general i have a problem with saying no i'm working on it i don't know why but it was also me thinking that she placed these you know certain expectations on me and I had up to a point always, or so I thought, done the thing that would please, well, my parents and my grandparents, right? So obviously including my mother. Um, and so it was that, but then getting to a point where if I'm trying to parent, but then you say something else, <laughs> that's, that's not going to work, right? And so therein lies the conflict. Um, so yeah, was boundaries as well. And still something I struggle with, but I think being able to be an adult Simone as opposed to the child Simone and have those conversations really helped in um, just becoming more aware and um, confident to be able to do that. Well, I, if I remember one, it, that that I would say of all the things that were going on in 2020, that was the heaviest weight. But that started long before 2020. It's just you move back in the house. Mm. <laughs> now you're like trying to push a, you know, the, the barbell with 2000 pounds on each side of it. And you wouldn't do it so good. Right. Like that. That would, you know, if we think about, you know, uh, my my toxic psychopath boss, it was true right? That he was a maniac. But it was also true that my forest had been on fire for 15 years before he showed up. He was that last match <laughs> that when he added his match to it, boom, it was over. But it wasn't, he wasn't the, the beginning of it. Once I came, came out of it, I'm looking back like, you know, you weren't managing your stress for 15 years. And had he come, if I would have been in the state that I'm in now, psh, I'm bothered. Whatever. You know, let me get this check and let me get my pension and get on up out of here. Hey, Chris Rutherford here. I hope that you are enjoying this podcast as much as we loved putting it together for you to share insight to make your life better. Now, did you get your copy of my resume course, How to Use the Superpower Method to Write an Irresistible Resume to Land You a High Paying Job? Look, even if you have somebody write your resume for you, how do you know whether or not it sucks? <laughs> And did you give them the information to be able to write a great resume or did you hope that they were going to spend gold out of something that you gave them that wasn't that good? So get this course, not just to write your own resume, but to be able to provide resume writers with what they need to adequately tell your story so you can get paid the money that you desire and deserve. So go ahead and click on the link on around this video get this course, use it, and get paid what you deserve. It's less than $50. I mean, come on, just get the course and use it. See you soon. So being stressed out, not taking care of yourself, not admitting mm -hmm. that you weren't perfect, right? Then, you know, having beef with, with your spouse, and this is normal. So this is normal talk. We're not judging. It is what it is, right? It's just black and white. Because they weren't helping, and then you weren't letting them help, and then you judge what they help. But then when your mama started judging your parenting style, baby, not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> and we see, what was that like? Cause that was, that, that didn't go good. Like what, cause did you shut down or did you fight or did you shut down or did you fight? Like which one was it? It was, go ahead. I shut down and it was very stressful. Right. It, it, it was very stressful. So that was something that I, I'm like, I don't know. And I think that so reaching out to you, I thought it was the job, but it was all the other things. Right. It was the grief. It was the um trying to get back to me. It was the uncertainty. It was a lot of things that the job that was that was like yeah very that uh, no that was the the dill pickle on the side that that had nothing to do with all the other things that were on the plate so 
how for for women i mean i have, i have literally seen a woman who had a nervous breakdown because she was unwilling to draw boundaries with her mama didn't want to do the work that's cool uh but don't call me when you cracked up like be like you know what i'm saying like so what advice do you have for women because they're just they're just healthy back the conversation has to be had go ahead well so and i will say this i love my mama so right but we all have these especially when we grow up right and then we are adult when because i i anticipate also trying to understand my children as they become adults right and who is that adult person so now it's the two of us and any any two women two or more women right in a space is going to have conflict right and so then when you take two women that share the same dna that's even an added layer so now we just we had to unpack some things which um and i'm not even i can't even re recall how that was done but it's a matter of getting to a place where we can exist coexist right and agree to disagree really right because we're not going to agree about everything so we just need to figure out a healthy way to do that yeah and we're not this is not about disrespect right this is about uh because you love your mom but and what she was doing was out of love it wasn't mm -hmm. malice but it's still pressure it doesn't matter you know jim Rohn said it don't matter if a friend put strict nine in your coffee or your enemy the result is the same so her so her her advice her insight was out of love it wasn't out of malice it wasn't her judging you that's how you were receiving it does that make sense but it doesn't matter like the 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 style of the message what matters is how the receiver received it so uh how, how you broke that if you don't remember kathy told you to take a family vacation that's that's cassandra Cassandra, I'm sorry. Yeah. Cassandra told you to uh, take a family vacation. That was that broke that a little bit. That was like a part of it, right? All right. So, <clears throat> how did the job change? How did how did the, the how did you the job change because you ended up getting a new job? Not saying. Say, okay, you say I, that had, I got the new saying. job before. Okay. We, yeah. Okay. How did how did how did your relationships at work change and how did you show up at work different? So I think it was more confidence for me, but also doing things without waiting for permission to do them. Right. Um, and so, and, and someone also, I will say, had to call me out on that. Right. Because she was like, you're you're so smart right you have all these great ideas why don't you just do it why are you asking me why but i think in my previous role it was that you know the um the residual effect right of that other experience and so that's another thing just trying to move on from that and knowing that i'm the bomb right like just period <laughs> right like i'm that deal and so even when um we did what was it the red apples and i'm writing all my stuff down i was like as i'm remembering more things i'm like damn girl you you, you kind of like you are up there right and i have to remind myself of that um and even when sending you the bio which in some cases i'm like am i still dumbing myself down because that's a habit that I had to break and get out of. Now, I remember, I don't know if it was on a call or if it was on print, because, you know, we communicate in like a million ways. Like, I don't know, but it was something like you were saying that you show up different. Like, I am that chick. Mm -hmm. You speak up and you share your insight and you take more initiative to like show up in different meetings and show up in different ways. And they call on you more because you're like showing up as the person who is the subject matter expert. Was that mm -hmm. you? That was you, wasn't it? it? Was it? Yes. That was you. 
Was it? And I've been waiting. Because I you. look. Because yeah. I am. I mean, I'm, just yeah, I'm that chick. I'm you're you're the subject matter expert, right? You didn't say subject matter expert, but it's you were like, I'm that chick. I'm just gonna say subject matter expert. But go ahead. Yeah, and another thing that I had to stop doing, which was a habit that I had to break, right? And it's it comes with the mindset shift, is comparing myself to others. I can't be like whomever over there, right? Because well, God made me the way he did and perfect in his image. So let me embrace that as opposed to trying to be like someone else. Um, and so that, I think, was also the shift when it came to um, being in my workspace. How did, how did the relationship, I don't know if you ever talked about the relationship with your husband change? Because we, we you thought it was the job. You thought the job was the plate. And then you said that was the deal pickle on the side, mm -hmm. right? And so part of the work that we do is like, if you get your life right and you get your family right, the job is going to fall into place. The job is the easy, money is easy, small. The other stuff is hard. Family is hard, right? So how did the relationship with your husband change from 2020 to the way, to the way, you know, y'all rocking out now? We're back to giggling together, right? Like it's just that back to high school sweethearts, right? So I got my boyfriend back. <laughs> <laughs> now and we went on a trip so this was an adults only trip that was long overdue hey alex <laughs> that was long overdue and um i think we were supposed to go to barbados i told you right for carnival now christy that didn't work out what was interesting is that um something with his passport my honey was all over europe in his 20s right so the passport they were like mm, why is this passport looking like that so anyway i'm like you know what let's still do the trip right even though i was apprehensive because remember i didn't want to leave my babies right i wanted to take them right but listen we have the trip plan let's look for a u.s territory so we wound up going to saint thomas i think for four days and it was it was blissful. <laughs> All right. One more thing, because we got to talk about that. You and these babies. Uh, who you love, by the way. Yes. Your husband was like, hey, let's go on a me and you trip. And you was like, to Carnival. <laughs> and you were like, great. Let's take the kids to see how other people live. <laughs> what? <laughs> Carnival is drinking, butt bumping, walking down the street, half naked, and you're like, yes, let's take the kids. And your husband was like, what? <laughs> True story. <laughs> and I was like, what? So now, because because what 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 I love about this conversation, one, thank you for, for being so transparent. You're gonna sell a lot of women free today and, and subsequent months and years. That was my prayer, by the way. Hmm. That if I set one one, that's why I was nervous about doing this, but I'm like, if I do it, show up and and just help at least one woman. But that's ahead. it. All we want is one. One is good, a thousand is better. If so now George Meyer said we live forward and understand backwards. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now that y'all have gone to St. Thomas and had the four blissful days, what's the difference had you taken the kids on a family trip as opposed to y'all being together alone? Well, I got to sleep in for one. <laughs> like even that alone, getting the rest um, and also not having to work, like literally just getting up and going. Um, one of our best days was just, let's go over to um, St. John, right? Well, it didn't work out quite that way. We got there. And then when we got there, we're like, oh, we could do a full day cruise, um, you know, to, to Virgin Islands National Park. So we did that. That was the best day, just being on the water, snorkeling. That's something that had we taken the kids, my heart would have been outside of my body because I would have just been a nervous wreck. I was nervous going by myself, right? Like by myself with my husband, but flying, it just, 
puts me in a space that is not great, first of all. But I had this epiphany when we were flying because there was a lot of turbulence going there. And then I was like, well, you have to get through the clouds, right? For it to be smooth sailing, right? For you to get to the other side. And so just that, I was like, okay, I did it. All right, now we're here. Now we're going to do all this stuff, right? And just having leisure time with my hubby, us connecting. And then the kids, they needed a break from us. Because then when we got back, you know, it was all love. We're good. We'll take them on the next trip. Hey, Chris Rutherford here. If you want to learn how to get a 30% raise this year without getting another degree, go ahead and get my free case study and get this information. Use it. You can go to changenowwithchristy.com. Changenowwithchristy.com. It's about 30 minutes. Use the insight. Own your value and get paid what you desire and deserve. Take care. See you soon. You know, it's interesting because you said my honey was all over Europe. I ain't never. We've been rocking for three years. <laughs> never. Heard you call that man endearing words. You didn't say anything negative. Like you never said, you never called him anything. You just never said my honey. Mm -hmm. That's reconnection, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah. now we're back to being, you know, you be like my husband. You ain't never be like my husband, like Doctor Fear. But it's like you're you're now using endearing terms because y'all have reconnected. Yeah, that's my so coworker weird. said. She's like, oh my gosh, what if you go and you fall in love all over again? That's the point. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the four days were were where you were able to be Simone. He was able to be who he was, and y'all mm -hmm. were able to be together as you know, high school sweethearts who now want to remember each other because life is y'all have three kids and y'all work and, and then life is life. Mm -hmm. But y'all need that break too. And the kids needed a break from y'all crazy selves. Y'all can come back whole and now raise whole right. kids. What's the last question? Because this is so good. I don't talk to you all day, but I got I got to meet. <clears throat> how do you think how do I want to say this? What's the difference in, do you think the, you, you know, cause I always talk about kids like products, right? Like mm -hmm. I always say a broken mama can't produce a whole child. I don't care what y'all say. It's impossible. Right. And I listen to women who talk about, Oh, I have anxiety because my mama had anxiety or I have depression because my mama had impression. That is of a depression. That is not a generational, that's not a, a DNA trait, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, Kids saw that in their mom as an acceptable behavior because kids do what you do. They don't do what you say. Right. So what's the difference in how you think your kids will will grow into adults now than what they would have been had you stayed on that trajectory and how you were showing up in 2020? Man, you just said it. They do what you do. Right. Not what you say. So. The whole, like I said, the carefree mom that's dancing and having fun and enjoying herself. My eight-year-old, who is very, well, oh no, she's nine now. Anyway, but my oldest, she was in school and it was some after school activity, right? And she was just enjoying herself. And she was like, yeah, this is fun. I just want to break out and dance, but people going to think I'm crazy, <laughs> right? So I'm like, well, let them. Go ahead if they think that, but you may be bringing them joy, right? So now she's allowing herself to also break free because she was also wrapped very tight. And I realize now it's because her mom was wrapped really tight, right? right? And so now she's able to have this carefree life and be nine and enjoy herself so she can also grow up to be someone that will bring joy to other people. That's Does so that good. A question. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Because like she was wrapped tight because her mama was wrapped tight. She would have been anxious at 16, right? Or she's eight now, 12. And you're going to be like, oh, which creates more pressure for you 
but it's more pressure for her because she's trying to be perfect mm -hmm. and she's doing things to be perfect and not be judged for it. So that's, that's what she was doing. And now it's like, she'll be free because you're free. So now you can say, it's okay to, to be yourself. It's okay for you to laugh and have fun and have joy because that's going to keep you happy, right? But and, and then you might bring somebody else joy. So just that shift in perspective gives her permission to be herself because we're we're taught and condemned for being ourselves because it's not like other people. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for women who are considering working with us over here at Vision Fund? Vision Finder International. What advice do you have for them? That's my last question. If you are considering it and you have not yet done the Saturday, do a Saturday, but I will say do yourself and your family a favor, right? And get right. <laughs> Just, Chrissy, I don't know how else to say it, but it really needs, you need to do something for yourself and for your family, if you're going to do that. Um, and so I, as you mentioned, I did the, well, I did the Saturday, then I did three day, then I graduated up. There's no more three days. So just do it. And then you are also, um, you also have the benefit of working with a, a network of people that will be your support system, your support group, um, right? In a way that we are each other's cheerleaders, right? Like we'll be in our WhatsApp group um, or texting or what have you, um, really encouraging one another. And that's not something that we generally see with women. Um, and so it's, it's something that I, I would encourage you to, to do. And um, yeah, thank me later. So once you said something I forgot to talk about, mm -hmm. um, Cassandra, do you have any words for Cassandra? Because I know she's going to watch it. She's probably watching now. Um, that and then your community, right? Because y'all are tight. You and Miriam and them. So yeah. what is that like now to have that community? Because y'all hold each other accountable. But what, what was it like to have a coach that wasn't me? I be telling people, Simone, y'all don't want me. Uh, <laughs> For eight weeks. Y'all like me though, but y'all don't want me for eight weeks. Y'all, my coaches are amazing, right? Like, so what do you have for Cassandra? And then what is it like now to have that community uh that you didn't have before? So Christy gonna beat you in the head, but I will tell you with Cassandra, she was like <laughs> she was like a warm hug, right? Like after, after you get that, you need to get right, right? Then Cassandra will wrap you in a warm hug, but also tell you what needs to get done. Right. And so um, she was very encouraging and also, you know, checked in on me and um, especially with the trip, which was a big deal for me. Um, and then having our community, our network, of Sister Queens, that is something that is invaluable. Right. And so we re we reach out to each other, each other when we need something, but also just to encourage one another. There was one day, um, you know, the song Beautiful but with Pharrell and Snoop that popped into my head just out the blue. And I was singing it to myself. Right. I went in the mirror. I was singing beautiful. Right. Just listen, do it. But and then I dropped that in the chat for everyone. And so we'll do that for each other as well, just to amp ourselves up and, um, you know, to encourage one another. Yeah. You. Yeah. There's there's like a group of hype women to keep so y'all can stay happy. Most women like I, I wrote down. Um, oh, a quote today is my, my journal is over there because, you know, I journal every morning while drinking coffee and overlooking the ocean and watching yachts pass by. It's it's hard life, hard life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is the ocean too loud for you, Simone? Let me go close the door. That's what I asked him before. <laughs> what a thing. But um, what I wrote down was like, who are you? What's the community that you're getting common in your complacency with? Right? Like, like people to find commonality in their complacency. And they're like, we, you know, we do this. I'm like, no, that's you. But we are not okay. No, you're not okay. You know, I was talking to somebody last night. They said, well, you know, as men, we know that's you. Don't put that on, <laughs> right? on me. 
And so, you know, the, the, the goal now is not to be around women who have a bunch of limited conversations about what we can't do, what they're doing to us. It's, you know, um, you know, we should settle for this amount of money or we should settle for this life. It's like now y'all are talking about let somebody talk about settling in that group. It's over. Right. It's like y'all are talking about. No, you it's it's there's always something better. There's always something greater. And what's your next thing? And it needs to be spectacular because we're not doing average stuff over here. Listen, for the bio, when I sent it to my girls, they were like, OK, that's good. But you need to add this. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Like you need to amp it up some um so yeah absolutely yeah okay well all right simone thank you so much uh for showing up and sharing your insight we already got our one she raised her hand earlier um and um you know i hope that y'all take this insight and look ladies it's okay to 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 be crazy i used to be crazy <laughs> simone was half of reese's pieces <laughs> you know right i'm single with no kids she was Married with three kids, like it's like it, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are that creates like your almost demise. It's just not okay to stay that way. It's not fair to live that way. It's not fair to to not be present for your kids. It's not fair to be beefing with your husband about you know your what you're gonna judge him for ten minutes later. It's not fair for you to show up at work and not get paid what you deserve because you're working too much or you're too tired to be able to handle additional responsibility. So, you know, we're, I, I want a part of these conversations to, to be like, we live forward and understand backwards. Like it's possible to be free. It's possible not to have mom guilt, Simone. It's possible to be patient with your kids. Stop letting people and articles and studies tell you what you can't do. It's on you to determine whether or not you're going to adopt the language limitations or are you going to get on this train and go be who God has called you to be? That's all I got. Do you have any last words for the, uh, for the listeners? I do. If I could share something. Yeah. From go ahead. Emmett Fox. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. If you really believe in the existence of God, you should be happy and cheerful. God has all the power and God is good. So life must be good too. meet the world with a smile. You owe this to God, to your fellows, and above all else, to yourself. Is that that birthday book you got? Is that what it you is? Mean? Okay, good. I was. I think I just read that the other day. Uh, <laughs> February twenty fifth. It's from February twenty fifth. Yep. Yeah, I read that. I was like, oh, that was good. So, um, all right, ma'am. Thank you so much for showing up. Take care, y'all. Have a great weekend. God bless. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review if you love this episode. Follow Christy on Instagram and LinkedIn. And don't forget to get her free gift by texting change now, all one word. Again, change now to 66866. Until next time, go out and win bigger.